Hey, Pete here for Studio Live today. And as you can see by what's set up behind me, it is vocal recording day for my new song called College. And if you've been following the previous videos, you'll have known that we've done the drums and the guitars. And then today we're going to be recording the lead and backing vocals for this song. So in the video, I'm going to be going through how I set up to record vocals and a few tips and tricks and strategies to get the best vocal recording here in GarageBand on the iPad. And I'll then go and record all of the tracks. So you won't get to watch me record painstakingly every track and every take because that would be boring and it would ruin the surprise of the the final mix. Speaking of which, make sure you're subscribed to the channel because as soon as the new song is out, you'll be the first to be able to hear the complete finished product once it is all done. So it is now time for me to jump up over there, set up over here and start recording me some vocals. Let's go. Check. One, two, three. Okay, so here we are. We are set up with the microphone on a mic stand and another mic stand with the pop filter on here. So making sure that I can manage those plosive P's. Uh, I'm gonna sing through the pop filter here. The microphone is connected into my Steinberg UR12 interface down there through the mic preamp channel. And I'll have to go and check the input gain settings and make sure that we get the right level going into GarageBand on our iPad, which is down there as well. And I have a pair of headphones you can see plugged in there, and that's these ones here, the Sennheiser HD 280s that I use for my tracking and I'll be using these to record the vocals as well. The microphone that I have here is an Audio Technica AE3300 so it's actually whilst it looks like a dynamic it's actually a handheld condenser microphone so it's the first time I've recorded vocals with this mic it may be an epic failure and I may need to go back and, and use uh, something else. I've got a, a, an AKG um, dynamic mic, that uh, the D5, which is another possibility. And I've also got my large diaphragm condensers. So let's go down here to the iPad and get things set up ready for this particular take. Okay, so here is our song set up. You can see we have the drums and the guitars. We have already some scratch vocals that are recorded here. So... You notice I've got two new tracks here set up, so both using the Punchy Presence preset, and you can see that my microphone is going into those at the moment. So what I'm gonna do, if I adjust the gain on the interface here, so if I turn that up, you can hear, yes, that that goes up there, and if I turn that down, then you wouldn't have been able to hear me <laughs> because uh, the audio recording is coming through this interface as well. So when I start doing my first uh, vocal takes, I'll need to make sure that this input gain is set correctly so that we're not clipping over here on our microphone. So let's tap on our microphone to go to our view here. And there we are, there's our punchy presence. And if I give it a little bit of a test sing here, La, la, la. Yeah, you can see that we are way over on that. So I'm gonna dial back the input gain la 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 and that's looking a little bit better so ha just need to make sure that when i hit a loud note that it's not going to go over and clip and you are definitely better off in a digital environment keeping the input gain lower sticking on the low side you can add gain in a lot easier than you can fix a clipping or a distortion which is virtually impossible so what i do like to do though is actually put the output gain all the way up in GarageBand because that lets me hear a lot more of my vocals. So when we turn the monitoring on in a moment, then we'll be able to actually hear the effects of the punchy presence and then I'll be able to hear my voice a bit better. You can see I've got the compressor set quite high here as well by default and that just is gonna make sure that I can hear my vocals as well there. So I mentioned monitoring. There's two ways to monitor when you're using an interface like this. There's actually a direct monitor button on the interface, which is what I have on at the moment. And that's why you can hear the voice coming through because I'm now I'm recording this over on my PC's USB interface as well. And if I was to turn that off now without this monitoring on, then my voice would completely disappear. So if that you would see that it would still be coming in here, but it's not actually going out of this interface. The other way to monitor is we'll do this now. So I'm gonna turn off the direct monitor and turn monitoring on here in GarageBand. 
So what you're hearing now is the processed vocals coming through GarageBand. So the difference here is that there's potentially going to be some latency, which means a slight delay between when I'm actually speaking and when it's actually being recorded here in GarageBand. So why that's a problem is that it means that your timing may be off on your vocal recording. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do my first uh, pass of this vocal using the GarageBand monitoring because that will give me the effects on my voice and will make it a little bit easier to sing. If that's not going to work, then I'm going to switch back and use what I usually use, which is the direct monitoring, which means I don't have any effects on my voice, but it does mean that I can hear it exactly as I'm singing it with zero latency. With zero latency. So we have ourselves set up down here now. I'm going to get into the recording position, get the headphones on, and let's record a take of these lead vocals. I watched a movie back in 85 The kids were driven far away from home And they were left behind What is this place? Why is everyone so strange? That Krusty Dean made them all declare a major There's no such thing as college There's no such thing as college there's no such thing as college. Okay, so here is our first pass of the vocals. Wasn't an amazing take by any respect, but we have a full take. I forgot some words. I did some things wrong, hit some wrong notes, but that's our first take. Now, one of the things that I did notice in this is that I was running out of breath uh, once I sang the verse coming into the chorus, I was running very low on breath and that caused problems there because I wasn't able to sing it very well. So what I'm going to do is a technique that I use quite a lot with recording a lead vocal is to do it in parts or do it in chunks. And the reason I have this second vocal track here is that instead of overdubbing on this first track, what I'm going to do is line up where I want to come in and then I can sort of start singing and then continue on on the second track. You can then piece them back together back on the one track, but here in GarageBand, I find that's easier than using the multi-take recording, which is the other option that we can use. So I'm going to go and find this right spot and then set up and add in that second track of recording. So let's try that now. There's no such thing as college. So that's the spot where I want to start singing the chorus again. So what I'm going to do is we can get rid of everything after there. We can get this back very easily, but I don't want sort of two versions of myself singing over the same part. So let's come here and find the spot again. There's no such thing as... So that's perfect. That's where we want it to be because what we're now going to do is come and start. And this is good for me because I have to get back up over there it's a good option because I can actually make sure that I start earlier, listen in, and then can kick in with the recording when I need to. So I'm actually going to go way back to here and arm this track and start singing here. This time I am going to use the direct monitoring on here um, as opposed to monitoring here in GarageBand just to see if that's going to have any difference and if that's going to be easier for me to sing using that method. We will put the output gain all the way up and I'll just make sure that our input gain is not going to be clipping here. So we'll come back to here. La, la, la. Yeah, that's too loud. La, la, la. That's going to be about right. Okay, let us jump in and do this second take coming in at the chorus and we'll just continue on from there. I think they just made it all up. There's no such thing as coming. There's no such thing as coming. Letterman jackets and a homecoming parade just make no sense. There's no such thing as college.
Now, what I did there actually started clipping because I turned up the output here so I could hear it better in my headphones. Where it was recording over here started clipping there. So that clipping wasn't actually happening here in GarageBand. It was happening over on my other interface, which is why you're hearing that as quite distorted. But let's come back here and have a look at how this is recorded now. So you can see there, and yes, I've definitely got the level too high, so I'm going to have to come back in and play it with the input settings when I do another take of this. But the beauty part here is that what I can do now is record here and then I can jump back in back on this track and then jump back on this track. So I'm going to record this in four sections and it means that I can go through and record takes as we go along and then bring them back together or even just leave them on two tracks. So if there's a portion where in the verse it sort of crosses over into the chorus and then and it's going to cut off and sound weird, then I could actually leave that there and it blends it across. It means that it's not realistic in terms of what you could actually sing, but it if it sounds better and it fits the song, then then that's the way I'm going to go. The other tracks that I'm going to record are these backing tracks as well. So that's just some harmonies that happen mostly during the chorus that I'm going to record and use the same sort of method to record those. So I'm going to go away now. I'm going to do all of these recordings of these tracks and then I'm actually going to come back here and show you the finished product of the vocal recordings so that you can see how we've ended up there. Okay, welcome back. Now, I know you haven't gone anywhere, but it has been a couple of days since I did the initial vocal recordings. I did another few takes of some of the lead vocals and the backing vocals, and I'm in a position now where I'm pretty happy with most of it. I think I'm going to re-record at least some of the parts of the main vocal and maybe a couple of the backings, but we're not far away from having it. So, um, I have also switched devices, as you'll notice here. I'm now on the iPhone 6S. And the reason for that is that I've taken this with me to do some mixing and some editing while I've been out and about. So again, the flexibility of GarageBand is that you can take your recordings and mixes with you to do this sort of editing. So I thought I'd just take you through where we're at now with this particular track and We'll finish up the vocal recording and next time we come on about this track, we will have everything done and we'll be able to play the full song, which is exciting. Okay, so as we know, here are is here are. As we know, here is our drums and our three guitars and our bass. And we've now got all of our vocals. So the first two tracks there are some little gang vocals that uh, my wife actually recorded. So there's two phrases there where she features in the song. We then have my lead vocal, and you would have seen that previously I had these two lead tracks that I was recording to. I've done all the cutting and chopping and pasting, and I've got that all back to my one lead track. Now I've got that second track just there, just so that if and when I wanna do a re-record of that track, it's already there in place. Down here, I've got some background vocals. So I've got background vocal low, background vocal high. So they kick in sort of towards the start of the second verse and then go throughout the rest of the song. So there have been a few chops and edits, as you can see there, that we've done as we've gone along. And there's still some work to do to make sure any silences are chopped out of that before our final mix down. And finally, what are these two tracks at the bottom here that it looks like I'm recording on? Well, these are my vocal doubles. So what I've actually done in this track at this stage anyway, and this may change in our final mix, but what I've actually got is two tracks here at the bottom, one pan to the left and one to the right. And these are really low volume of my lead vocal track. So this just adds a little bit more depth and uh, and flavor to that lead vocal um, and just makes it a little bit fuller and richer kind of sound. So you're probably sick of hearing me talk and want to actually hear this track now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a couple of samples here just so that you can get a feel for how the song is coming together, how the mix is kind of working. So let's go to the start of the track and I'll play part of the first verse. watched a movie back in 85 the kids were driven far away from home and they were left behind what is this place why is everyone so strange that crusty dean made them all declare a major so there you can go there you go at this part of the track we've just got the 
lead vocal and the double vocal in there. Let's just have a quick listen to how things are sounding in the chorus with our backing vocals as well. And nerds and jocks and freaks and geeks are all teeth. I think they just made it all up. There's no such thing as college. There's no such thing as college. There's no such thing as frat boys and glee clubs and it girls. There's no such thing as college. There you go. So you can hear that uh, I've got a little bit of work to do with some of these vocals. So the, the lead vocals a little bit pitchy there in that particular chorus that needs to be fixed up. So probably a re-record of at least a part of it there. And I think uh, some of the backing vocals just need some tweaking, whether that tweaking is in the compression and the EQ settings or whether I need to re-record some of those parts, we will see. But this song is very close to being released, so I'll be working hard in the next day or so to get it finished, get it the recording done and get it released. So I hope you enjoy this slightly disjointed video where I've recorded vocals here on the iPad and the iPhone here in GarageBand iOS. And we're very close to getting our finished mix done. And that will be premiering right here on the channel in a video coming up really soon. Thanks again for watching. Cheers.